So in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to do color correction in DaVinci Resolve. I'm using DaVinci Resolve 15 Beta. The final release should be available soon. There's both a free version and a paid version, and the free version is really excellent. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and start up DaVinci Resolve and let it go through the uh, startup sequence. And typically in DaVinci Resolve, it'll either open into the last project that you've worked on, depending on your settings, or it will open into a request for a new project. In my case, this is opening into the previous project I was working on. I'm going to go to the bottom right, click on the little home button, and I'm going to select new project. In this, I'm going to go ahead and call it DaVinci DR example and either press the return key or create, click on create. So now we've got a blank slate here. The pages that we're going to play with today are the media page. We'll take a quick peek at the edit page. I'm down at the bottom of the screen if you can't see where my cursor is. We're going to look here. We're going to look in the color page. And we're going to look in the deliver page. Again, this is going to be a quick overview. I'll do some more videos in more detail in the future. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the video into DaVinci Resolve that we want to work on. So I'm going to go over here to my RAID. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go down until I find the DaVinci Resolve Clip Storage folder. And inside this, I have a video articles folder. And over on the right, I've got the footage that I'm going to use for this in the color correcting DJI, DCine like and DR. I'm going to double click on that, and that's going to show me my footage. Next, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to add it into the media pool. I've got a different setting for projects than the clip is and so it's asking me do I want to change to the format that is the clips format and I am going to do that. So now that I've got the clip into the media page, into the master bin or the master folder, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select Create New Timeline using selected clips. So I could have more than one clip selected, but for this example, we have the one. And then I'm just going to call this DR example, just to keep things simple. And we've created it. So now down here, I have the DaVinci Resolve clip, and I also have the timeline. So to work on the timeline, the simplest way is to just double click on it, and that's going to take me to the edit page. We're not going to play in the edit page today. I'm going to assume that you've got the clip the way that you want it, and we're going to quickly move over to the color page. That's the fourth icon on the bottom, and if you hold your cursor over it, it'll say color. So we're going to click on that, and it's going to take us here. So in this setting, we have the nodes showing, I have the video showing, I have the clip that I'm working on showing. If the clip isn't showing, you can come up here and click on clips, toggle it off and on. If your nodes are not showing, you can come up here to nodes and toggle that off and on. So that should get you started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select this node. Oh, and by the way, Nodes can have settings from things like the color wheels, or they can have a, uh, uh, an, an effects in them. They can have curves associated with them. They can have multiple things, or they can just have a single thing. And the thing I like about them is that I can break stuff down into smaller pieces, turn it off and on for myself and for clients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this first node, select node label, and I'm going to call this exp slash sat for exposure and saturation. I'm going to keep this really simple. Now we could have broken that into 
two nodes, one for exposure, one for saturation. And depending on the complexity of what I'm doing with a clip and how much the light changes, I may in fact do that. But for this example, we're going to just keep it all in one node. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the waveform monitor. Don't be intimidated if you've never used one, but it can really help us to do uh, a better job and be more efficient in getting the clips to be in balance. So to do that, I'm going to come down to this little icon right here that says Scopes. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to go to this little button to the far right here, and I'm going to expand. Now it's possible that you might have this as your default view with all four scopes. If you do, just come over here to the single window view and click on that. Now if you have another waveform showing, if you can just go over to the drop down here and choose waveform. While this is showing color, we really don't need it. So I'm going to have you go over here to the settings button and I'm going to have you click on the Y and this will just show us the luminance. If you can't see your waveform as well, you can change the, the brightness of the waveform and the graticule, you can change how basically how bright the lines are. We'll go ahead and slide that over here underneath this image and what I want you to see is that the waveform just shows us how bright and dark the image is across the image. So if you, if you can imagine mapping this on top of that image, that's showing us the brightness and darkness across the entire image. So I'm going to slide this back over to the right to get it out of our way. Now, if you're brand new to DaVinci Resolve, sometimes the simplest way is to come down to the little A button here for auto and have it give you a start. It's going to try its best to set the white balance and um, to set some levels to give you a good looking picture. It's not going to do anything with saturation. It's just going to set the levels of the lift gamma gain. And that's a pretty good first shot. So now we're going to look at lift gamma and gain. Lift has to do with the dark areas or the shadows. Gamma has to do with the midtones, and gain has to do with the highlights or the bright areas. So by going over to the scope, we can look and see what's going on here. And maybe we like this image and maybe we don't. But let's go to the gain or the highlights, and I want you to drag that down just so you get a sense of what's happening. Maybe you don't want it quite as bright as the automatic settings. Maybe you bring it down to there. Maybe you want it darker than what the automatic settings are. Now remember, anytime we go below zero, we're doing what's called crushing blacks. We're pushing, we're making it so dark that eventually there'll be no detail in the dark area. So you want to be really careful with that. And now the midtones, you know, adjust to taste. What is it that looks good to you? So once we've got something that looks the way that we want, we'll come down to this bottom row, and SAT stands for saturation. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to drag to the right. I'm holding my mouse button down, and I'm dragging. And I'm going to get something that approximates what I saw. We've taken decine like from a flat image. Let me show you before. So this is before. And through a few quick steps, we've turned it into this image. Now there's lots of other things that we can do, and I'll talk more about that in future uh, video articles. But for today, this is good enough. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the waveform monitor by clicking on the little X. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you. Sizing this window is a little odd. The only place you can size it from is the bottom right. So I'm going to click on the X and I'm going to close it. And I'm going to add one more node to do just a little bit of sharpening so you know how to do that. I'm going to right click on the node. I'm going to go down to add node 
and add serial. It's called a serial note because there's different kinds. Okay, next thing I'm going to right click and select the node label and I'm going to type, and I use all caps just because that's my preference. Okay, so we've got sharpen. Now, how do we do sharpening? If you've got the paid version, you can do some fancy stuff. The free version still has a, a very good ability to sharpen. So what we do is we come down to the blur tool here, click on it. Then we come over to blur and we change from blur to sharpen. And for this exercise, all we're going to do is we're going to play with the settings on the radius. And I'm going to zoom in and I can do that by my with my scroll wheel on my mouse or just the center of the magic mouse. Then I'm going to come down here to the radius and I found that 45 to 47 or 48 is about all the sharpening that we need. And there we go. You've now adjusted the exposure, the saturation, and you've done sharpening. So the last thing to do is how do I get this out of the computer? How do I deliver it? So we're going to come down and we're going to go to the deliver page. And to keep this simple and straightforward, you're going to browse to a location where you want this to be stored. I store this in a folder called Video Master Files. You're going to come down to Video. You're going to choose whatever format. I'm going to do QuickTime. I'm going to go down to the codec and I'm going to choose H.264. I do multiple pass because I want a little bit better quality here. A number of passes, you can change it to single. In fact, let's do that. Once we've got that in place, and there's a lot of fine tuning that can go on here, but for today, just keep it simple. We're going to go down to the button, add to the render queue. With that selected, I'm going to start the render. It's going to tell me that it's rendering out. And there you go, we're done. Okay, so that's an example of how to take a DCINI like clip from your DJI drone and through a few simple steps, translate it into a usable video. Thanks, enjoy when you're flying, fly safe and have fun.